Hey everyone, so in my previous video, I happened to discuss about what all factors contribute to weight gain and why is it so hard to lose weight with PCOS, in which I happened to mention about insulin resistance being the primary factor. So in this video, I'm going to emphasize on insulin resistance in detail. So it's important to understand what is insulin resistance. So every time you consume sugar or carbohydrates, that leads to a spike in your blood sugar levels. And to regulate your blood sugar levels, your pancreas release a hormone called insulin. This insulin allows your cells to absorb the glucose to be used for energy. But when you consume excess sugar and carbohydrates on a daily basis, your body converts this excess sugar into fat. So due to the loading of excess sugar and fat into your cells, your cells will start resisting insulin. They don't respond to insulin. This is called insulin resistance. So now it's important to understand how does insulin resistance impact a woman with PCOS. So having high levels of insulin can trigger the production of excess LH, which is a luteinizing hormone. This hormone sends a signal to your ovaries to make more androgens or male hormones. So having high levels of androgens can prevent or inhibit ovulation. Number two is high levels of insulin also reduces something called SHBG. SHBG is a sex hormone binding globulin. So SHBG binds, binds to male hormones or androgens, but when a woman with PCOS produces low levels of SHBG, that leads to elevated free androgens. So that creates so many complications. Then comes your thyroid. So high levels of insulin also impacts your thyroid function. As we know, thyroid influences our metabolism. So high levels of insulin reduces the conversion of T4 into T3, basically affecting your metabolism. Then comes cortisol. So as we know that having high levels of stress is a common condition in PCOS. So similar to your ovaries, even your adrenal glands produce excess androgens under high levels of stress. So if you see having high levels of insulin or insulin resistance can trigger all these complications and it basically aggravates these conditions. So fixing the insulin resistance is extremely important. So now it's important to understand what are the symptoms and how do we know if we are insulin resistant. So every time you consume meal, you tend to feel hungry despite of having your food because your cells are not absorbing energy from your bloodstream. That's why you feel extremely hunger although you had your meals. And you also crave for sugar. You feel extremely thirsty. You have this urge to urinate because of high blood sugars. You have this frequency to urinate and uh, you might also feel extremely tired and fatigued. You also experience frequent infections like UTI and you also experience um, tingling sensations in your feet and hand. So to test for uh, insulin resistance or to understand the intensity of insulin resistance, there's a test called HOMA IR that can really be uh, helpful to understand uh, the extent or intensity of insulin resistance. So now comes the part wherein we need to understand how do we reverse insulin resistance? Well, the good news is that insulin resistance can be reversed. My recommendations would be following a zero sugar diet. It means that you should not include any form of sugar in your diet. And that can really be beneficial in the long term. And then comes low carbohydrate diet. So, since uh, we have a staple food in India, it's very hard for us to go on a low carbohydrate diet. But I have seen people experiencing great results going on a low carbohydrate diet because that keeps your blood sugar levels in check. And intermittent fasting. I cannot emphasize enough on how important intermittent fasting is and how what all uh, solutions it can uh, create in the body. For example, every time you're doing intermittent fasting, your body converts or breaks down the stored fat to be used for energy. So that way you tend to lose your fat and it also helps to keep your insulin levels in check. And also exercise. 
exercise does help you a lot in improving insulin sensitivity and everything but unless you follow a low carbohydrate diet intermittent fasting and zero sugar diet you cannot e yield the benefits out of exercise as simple as it is because you basically cannot outwork a bad diet so make sure that uh, we keep our insulin levels in check and reverse these conditions by following these things that i just mentioned so i'll be talking about all these things in detail in my upcoming videos so please like share and subscribe to this channel and do share it with your friends and family who would benefit from this uh, information thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video